So I'm going to talk about woodlands, hedgerows and scrub. But before I talk about woodlands, I'm going to take a slight detour and talk about ice ages. People who study ice ages say that ice ages are when ice sheets are found at the north and south poles of the planet. So that means that we are actually in an ice age now. And this ice age has been ongoing for the past two and a half million years. Now in these ice ages there are warm phases and cold phases. We're currently in a warm phase. The last cold phase started about 110,000 years ago and ended about 10,000 years ago. Now it took a while for that cold phase to really get going and it was only 25,000 years ago that it reached glacial maximum. Now glacial maximum means when there was the greatest amount of ice cover during the cold phase. In Ireland it was thought that at one point maybe two-thirds of the island was covered. Then people thought maybe it was a bit more. And nowadays people think pretty much all of the island was covered and a lot of the sea to the west and the south. So by about 10,000 years ago that cold phase had finally drawn to almost a close. And from about that time plants and animals would have made their way back onto the island. Now the first plants would have been low-growing scrubby plants. But by about 7,000 years ago there was good coverage of woodland. Also about 7,000 years ago people had arrived on the island and the first people were hunter-gatherers and they would have lived on an island that was pretty much covered with woodland, 80% if not more. And there's evidence that about 6,000 years ago people had started to clear woodland to plant crops and keep livestock. Today only about 11% of Ireland is under woodland and most of this woodland is plantations of non-native conifer that are grown for wood. Only about 2% of Irish woodlands could be thought of as native broadleaf woodland. Some of this woodland is in the grounds of large estates where woods would have been kept for hunting and other purposes. And woodlands also found in areas that are not good for agriculture or for building houses, so areas that are quite wet, and also on cliffs and the sides of steep river valleys. Now if you look in the landscape you can usually make out these wooded valleys, the long strips of woodland otherwise surrounded by agricultural land. So what kinds of woodlands are there in Ireland? A Guide to Habitats in Ireland is a book that classifies woodlands and other habitat types in Ireland. A Guide to Habitats in Ireland was published by the Heritage Council and it can be downloaded from their website, the National Biodiversity Data Centre website and the National Parks and Wildlife Service website. Or you could. There's a section in the Guide to Habitats that looks at woodland and scrub and other types of woodland. And it divides woodlands into semi-natural woodland and highly modified non-native woodland. Now, if you know Ballancolig, you'll know that in the regional park there's quite a lot of woodland. But if you look at an aerial photograph of Ballancolig, you'll see that there's relatively little woodland. Most of the larger areas of woodland are on the north side of Ballancolig, near the river. Quite a lot of the woodland in here is in the Lee Valley proposed natural heritage area. And there are other areas of woodland scattered across Ballincollig. In a guide to habitats in Ireland, woodlands were divided into two groups depending on whether they were classified as semi-natural woodland or highly modified non-native woodland. When classifying woodlands, it's done based on the types of trees that are found in the canopy. Those are the tallest ones in the woodland but also based on plants that are found growing lower down in the field layer and the shrub layer. In Ireland it can very often be the case that in the canopy there are a lot of non-native tree species, so it would be highly modified non-native woodland. But plants growing lower down in the shrub and field layer are very similar to the type of plants found in semi-natural woodland types. Two of the most common non-native broadleaf tree species found in Irish woodlands are beech, and sycamore. In the drier woodlands in the regional park, even when there are a lot of non-native species in the canopy, the lower layers, the ground layer and the shrub layer, still have a lot of native species. And a lot of these species are the same species that are described for oak ash hazel woodland, WN2, in A Guide to Habitats in Ireland. These include species such as bluebell and ramsons, pignut, sanical, Lords and Ladies, Wood Speedwell, and Wood Avons. Other woodland types in Ballincollig include riparian woodland,
and wet willow alder ash woodland. I'm going to move on now to talk about hedgerows. In a guide to habitats in Ireland, we saw that there is semi-natural woodland and highly modified non-native woodland. But there's another section called linear woodland and scrub. These are long, thin habitats, mainly made up of woody plants like shrubs and trees. In the guide to habitats, hedgerows are included in this group. We said before that only 11% of Ireland is under woodland, and 2% or less than that is native broadleaf woodland. Some people estimate, though, that if we clumped all of our hedgerows together, they'd take up much more space than all of our native woodland. And some reckon that 15% of all our native broadleaf trees are to be found in our hedgerows. Hedgerows provide food and shelter for a huge range of invertebrates, as well as birds and mammal species. But just as importantly, they act as corridors or routes through the landscape so that animals can move about and find food and mates. A lot of animals are nervous of open spaces like fields, so hedgerows are really important for them. Some kinds of hedgerow are better for wildlife than others. Depending on where you are in the country, maybe, or what time of the year, some hedgerows can be kept very, very short, and others are kept not so short. In the hedgerow on the top left, you can see there's a lot of flowers. Typical hedgerow plants like bramble and hawthorn, or some people call it white thorn, provide lots of flower for pollinating insects in the spring and then berries in the autumn for other wildlife. While ivy provides flowers for pollinators in the autumn and then berries through the winter and the spring. If we go back to our map of Balancholic, we can see that most of the hedgerows are to be found in what's now agricultural land at the south side of Balancholic. A lot of this land will probably become housing estates in the future, so hopefully some of those hedgerows will be kept. But even in the built-up areas of Balancholic, there are hedgerows. There's a new hawthorn hedge planted around the school, and it's got some other species in it now too. And also a much older hedgerow has been kept as a boundary for a housing estate. Turning to scrub, in a guide to habitats, scrub is described as areas that are dominated by at least 50% cover of shrubs, stunted trees or brambles, and the canopy height is generally less than 5 metres or 4 metres if it's a very wet area. Scrub is sometimes called a successional habitat. For example, if an area of grassland is not managed, it can be invaded by woody shrubs and then it's scrub, and then scrub eventually will turn into woodland. So management is very important. If you want to keep an area of grassland, it has to be managed, and if you want to keep an area of scrub, that has to be managed as well. Scrub can be a problem, for example, in the burren. Hazel scrub can overtake important limestone grassland habitat. But even in the burren, it's recognised that scrub is also a valuable habitat itself. It's all about management. Here are some quotes I found about scrub online. Scrub is a valuable habitat in its own right. Increased biodiversity is associated with larger areas of well-managed scrub. Where it grades into grassland is most important ecologically, it is important for invertebrates. Even a small area of scrub can be very biodiverse. That was a bee on bush fetch, and this is a peacock butterfly surrounded by bees on a butterfly bush. This is Robin's pincushion. It's caused by the larvae of a tiny wasp living inside the stem of this rose. And I'm pretty sure this is a potato capsid bug. Here we have tufted vetch, imperforate St. John's wort, and red bartia, which gets some of its nutrients by parasitizing the roots of grasses. And all this biodiversity and more in just one small area of scrub.